This is the help me video for the cells and cell structure test. Just a uh, run through what's on the front here. It's out of 32, your name, the teacher, your minimum expected grade and the actual grade that you've got. Uh, marking code. Um, we wanted some way of, of showing you that some stuff that you've done is correct so we underline that stuff just to show you it's correct. You might not have got the mark in the question but we, we try and underline things just to show you you've done something right. Uh, we award ticks if the mark is there and you can count up your ticks. If anything's wrong then we will put a circle around it to show you that bit's wrong and if we're not giving you a tick and we go no no you're not having that we'll put you uh, across on. These codes here RTQ read the question which means that you've ignored uh, an instruction. If it says describe and you've explained it, then we will put read the question. UI, use the information, which usually means that it's given you some information which you have then ignored. So look, read the question again and, and use what you've been given. Uh, vocab, uh, terminology, that sort of thing. You've used a general word rather than a, a scientific word. You've used something like it or thingy or thingy, something like that, uh, where it wanted something uh, more scientific. M for maths. Uh, fully complete work. So PC, uh, partially complete. So you, you've abandoned ship halfway through a question. You've missed something out. Um, if you've missed out a word usually, um, we use the little little arrow. Um, for example, we, the answer might be two words, um, like, oh, let me think, two words like uh, image size, the word image size, you might need that, but you've just written image or size, and we, we put a little hat there to show that we need both words for example and spag uh, spelling punctuation and grammar um, you don't have to be brilliant to this but just enough to tell us what the right answer is you know we have to understand what you're saying this is a help me video and there'll also be a answer video and um, you can then comment on what you've done and you know, targets for getting better in the next test So this is a help me video, so no answers but just clues on how to answer it in the best way possible. This bacterial cell and a plant mesophyll cell, both have a cell wall and a cell surface membrane, give one other way. So I'm going to highlight other here. Quite a few people have not given another way and they've given more than one. So that will be read the question and this bacterial cell. So you can't talk about flagella or anything like that because this cell hasn't got a flagellum. So we're looking at something else that's in plant cells uh, that would also be here. And we, you're given some sorts of clues here. Um, you, so you can use the diagram. And then the second part is differences. So we're looking for ways that this bacterial cell is different to the plant. So it really wants you to talk about this cell and how it's different. So for example something that is present here but not in a plant or something that is missing here where a plant would have it. Part B uh, name one so one thing and then other membrane bound organelle so things here, you know, organelles, but a ribosome won't be an organelle because it's not a um, membrane-bound uh, organelle. So you can't use that. And we're looking for the major, the major things that we've got and the function. Here, uh, functions of organelles pretty, pretty straightforward. You can't say things like making energy for mitochondria. You need to be a bit more specific. And it's just stuff from your notes, really. 
there. So go go to your notes. Here we are labeling parts. Common errors for A is calling it a cell wall when it's it's a liver cell. So it won't have a cell wall as it being a, an animal cell. And uh, the magnification is 12,000 times. Calculate the actual length of mitochondrion labelled M. The most common error here is to, you know, measure the width of the entire, of the entire diagram. But what you need to do is measure mitochondrion M, and so I get, you know, 11. 11 millimeters there so measure it in millimeters so your image size is 11 millimeters and the clue here is well it's 12,000 times too big here so we've got 11 millimeters here but it's actually 12,000 times smaller than that so you're gonna you're gonna divide it and give our answer in micrometers. So you're going to have to convert millimetres to micrometres at some point. My advice is to convert it straight away and then, div then divide it by uh, 12,000. Um, if you've measured this and you decided it's uh, actually 12, then you know, that's okay. You slight you know, one, one millimetre either way with the, the measurement won't, won't matter too much. We have got a diagram, and that's cell X, and then we've got a diagram of that, and a eyepiece unit measurement. Here's a calibration, and we have got, this is the eyepiece scale, and this is the stage micrometer scale and 0.1 millimeters here so 0.1 0.1 0.1 and so on so those are each 0.1 the scale that we're using so we use the tiny little units so that would be 0 to 100 there uh, in on the IP scale and so our calculation our calculation is going to start off when we do it is we're looking at you know 100 of our eyepiece units is equal to how many of these well we've got 10 of 10 of those 0.1s so 100 eyepiece units is 10 stage micrometer units so 10 times by 0 0.1 millimetres, and that's your calculation there. However, there's a, there's a little question before then. Um, how do we make the cytoplasm nucleus appear more obvious? Well, in the practical, you did something before looking at the slides. So you got the onion epidermis, then you added something to it. What did you add to it? What, what chemical and, and what was the sort of general name of, of what you were doing? The calibration for one eyepiece unit, and we've done that and there's also a video of this process. And then when you get this number here, so you, you find this here, you actually cal might calculate it in millimetres first, don't forget to uh, times it by a thousand, times it by a thousand to make it into micrometres. And then the actual length of the onion cell, well we've got 18 eyepiece units, so it's, it's 18 times by whatever we had there. So even if you mucked this up, you might get the mark down here, yeah, you might, that error might be carried forward. Work out the magnification, so working out the magnification Well, we know the actual, we know on this, we know what the actual is now. 
and we know the image size because we can just measure it. So we can measure the image size there and I get 81 millimeters. We've got the actual size. Um, the actual size uh, was there. Okay, so we know that and we, we had that in micrometers. Uh, so probably best, we, we, we need these in the same unit, so 81,000. 81,000 there, yeah. And the magnification is how many of those fit into our 81,000. So it'll be image divided by the actual. And again, if you've mucked up earlier, it's still worth having a go at this um, because your error might be carried forward um, and you, you might still get the marks. Then you have a lovely essay, a nice, nice, nice picture there. Organelles A, B and C and F are involved in the production of the secretion shown at P. There we are. Okay, P is a bit of a bit of a clue as to what what might be produced as well. And so we we could do with identifying these. Um, so kind of like funny curved shape stack of of things there at A. We've got a B is something there. These are also these these are B as well. Okay, and a well known organelle, sort of the classic organelle. And C, kind of stringy, kind of, there we are, but it appears to have kind of dots on it. And F, these these dots here, of which might be on this, uh, this organelle here as well. So, what are we looking, what are we looking to do? Well, there's kind of three main areas here, and, you know, we could talk about, well, you know, B, what, what's B? So identify B, so B is whatever, and tell us its job, because uh, it's doing something to help this kind of process. It's not kind of directly involved in the mechanics of it, it's doing something to help this process. And can we, can we talk about uh, compartmentalization as well in relation to that? So compartmentalization is, you know, separating of things with membranes. So I try and think of a reason why you might want to separate some things with membranes. So that's the kind of first area. Then and we've got another area of well, let, let's go for let's go for this process at A, B, and C. So what have we got? We've got, you know, A, B, and C. So we can put those in order. Tell us what is actually going on, you know, the, the function of them uh, in making this, yeah, making and moving this uh, stuff that's been secreted out of the cell. So it does rely on you knowing what the name of them are, is and, and what the you know, the structure of them and how, how that helps carry out carry out that job. And remember to talk about compartmentalization. So you know, for example these things here that are moving towards here. Why why have they got a why have they got a, a membrane around them? So um, we've probably got actually C and F can be kind of there. They kind of do the same job, don't they? So C, which is this stuff, or they might be on their own. What are they doing? So what's their job? A and B. So A these things and B, you know, what, what, what they kind of got, got to do with it. 
there's a kind of a different version of that and B well that, that's got a kind of main process to it and um, what's going on on there to help this help this process and the overall job of producing this substance that gets secreted out of the cell <laughs> quite difficult to give you help without giving you the names of things uh, the answer video will be a lot clearer